Hello and welcome to the Book by Book, a podcast about the odd book or two we've read. I'm your host Scott and I'm not alone. Toby's here with me. In this episode I'll be talking to him about Toshikawa Kawaguchi's Before the Coffee Gets Cold. This is actually going to be a pretty spoiler free episode so I hope you enjoy and see you on the other side. Toby, if if you could go back in time and have a conversation with someone, but it has to be someone you've already had a conversation with, but nothing you say can change the events. Is there anyone? I'm springing this on you. I'm not, uh, listen to me. Where I've been texting Toby random questions so he could have some time to answer them, but I'm not sure if he, I'm springing this one on him. This one he hasn't texted me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. If you could go back in time and have a conversation with someone you know, but it won't change anything. Like that, that everything that's happened since has still happened. Yeah. Can you think of someone or would you take up on that offer? If it's far too personal, you don't have to answer. <laughs> um, well, can you guess the premise of the book I'm about to talk about based on that question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, well, there's people I'd go back and talk to, like my mum, who passed when I was 18. I'd go back and talk to her. Mm. But, yeah, that would probably be the only person I'd go back and talk to because changing the events, not being able to change the events, mm. that's the only conversation that I would benefit from having. Mm. Even though the events change the same, say, stay the, cha- stay the same. Do you know what I mean? But I do, yes. Positive, positive retro conversation to have over any other I think there's no other interaction that I would go back for that is a great answer I I don't even have one and I've I've read this book and I planned this question (laughs) I guess go back to uh like personal conversations where I could have like I guess personal regrets of like oh you could have just come off clearer or given a more finer response and closed things off better like at the end of a relationship sort of thing yeah yeah. the only thing I could think of Toby, I'm about to talk about Toshikatsu Kawaguchi's Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Oh, I, I don't know if you've heard of it. That's a hell of a name, but I love the cover. That cover is something that would ping off the shelf and grab my attention. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to describe it. How do you describe it? It's, I don't want to say sparkly because that's going to put simplistic, people off. But it, simplistic, but um, evocative. It captures how I feel about just reading the back of it and the title of it. Like, I want to read that on a wet, cold day. To me, that seems whimsical and uh, not overtly intense, just from the cover, but a nice something you can read on a rainy day that's going to, or in a coffee shop. Toby, prepare for a whimsical and not overly intense <laughs> description of before the coffee gets cold. It is about it's, it's about 200 pages long and it's sort of vaguely split up into four, meaning you get you get these chapters of 50 pages. And it's I think I read this in two days, but it's the sort of book you just like uh, you certainly want to read each chapter in one sitting and you can yeah. do. So th- here, here in lies the concept. In a basement in Tokyo there is a quirky but unremarkable cafe it is called fun- it. it is called the funiculi funicular and some years ago there was a big kabu and uh, articles and it sort of turned into an urban legend and we'll get on to that a bit but so we start off with a woman in the calf asking if it's true and they say, yes, what do you know about it? And, okay, I have a really bad habit of saying I'm not going to spoil it and then going like, detail yeah, to detail. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm like, everything you say <laughs> sounds freaking awesome. <laughs> so here are, here are the rules, because this is a time travel novel. That's that's written on the back blurb. That is the concept. Is not right, okay, yeah. okay. You have to sit in one particular chair in this cafe. You can only you can only talk to someone you've already talked to in the cafe because you can't get up and leave your seat. You can't change anything that's happened since. And you're given a coffee to kick off 
and you have to drink the coffee before it gets cold and then you're back. So the time span is, you know, a cup of coffee and specifically before it gets cold. And, and those are the rules. The book will hammer those rules in. We are more than halfway through and they're still like, Hey, the rules are this. It's like, yeah, I know the rules. It's on the back of the book and it's on the first page and the second page and, and they will hammer those rules in. And so we have some staff. There's, there's three staff and it feels excessive. I'm not going to lie. I'll get onto that as a review of the book. So I'm going to keep going with, with the rough plot. There are four stories. So it's sort of like four people who are, who are using this. There are the lovers and that is a couple who split up and then the lady comes back and she wants to go back about two weeks. We have the husband and wife and the husband has Alzheimer's and the wife wants to go three years back to a specific point because there is the disintegration of her husband through Alzheimer's. Yeah. <clears throat> That's nice. We have the sisters um, a sister who is hiding from her younger sister. This is this is something that's that was pretty cool, and I, I guess it's like very. It's it's sort of a peek into kind of I guess how how uh, Japanese traditions can work. But there's a set of parents who own an inn, and they always thought that the eldest daughter would inherit the inn and run the business, but she doesn't. She leaves and moves to the city to have her own life, and so the parents disown her and basically force it upon the younger daughter. So the younger daughter is constantly coming back saying, can you come home? And the older sister is like, yeah, but basically I have to trap myself to free my sister. And she's always hiding from her sister and ignoring her cause. And I, I won't say why, but I might slip out later by mistake. The, the older sister needs to go back, into the, back in time about two weeks to talk to the younger sister. We then get the mother and daughter which is hard to talk this in, in certain spoiler terms because there's a rule break in here, but this is a 10 year jump right? where a, a mother needs to talk to her daughter. And these four, basically each one wraps up within its own chapter. Yeah. There's not like a climax with all four coming back. Yeah. The, these are the setups. They're like I said, they're, they're about 50 pages each and they are, they're all a satisfactory ending. There's sort of slight twists. I guess how you think it's going to go, it gives it a little twist. And in some instances, it's, I guess it's what you expect, but not how you expect it. Okay, that sounds cool. And um, I, it is a weepy. It's, it's all about the emotion. Yes. With, with each character, as you can imagine. A couple having to, to relive a split up, knowing that you can't change what's happened. A husband who has basically forgotten his wife and the wife wanting to go back to a specific moment where she remembers him and yeah. some some of them know about the cafe and some of them don't so some of them cotton on like hey this is odd you've come from the future haven't you because they know about the rumor of the cafe right and so then there's a worrying thing of like why have you come to the future to talk to me why aren't you talking to me in the present that scares me a little each, each chapter, actually, when we go back in time, it's very short within the book. A lot of the, the, the chapter is the, the kind exactly. of setup, the build up, the establishment. And in some of them, it goes horribly faster than you might imagine. Like one of them, it's like she instantly drinks her coffee, like to, just to drink a little bit, and it's already like lukewarm. Like yeah. it's not scorching hot. It reminded me of uh, just when you plan a conversation. And away it's going to go. And it doesn't. And it's just not that easy when you're in there. Here's the interesting thing about this book. It was originally a play. Um, the same author who I think produced, directed and written it has, has written this book. And it does show and not necessarily in a good way. This book, it's, it's a super nice read. It, it is a chicken soup for the soul. Yeah. Uh, but... It's definitely a, the four the four act structure um, that it seems to have. You know, the four single singular stories do lend themselves to a stage style show. Mm, right, right, right. And uh, actually, there is 
not so much of a, a sequel, but more stories from the cafe. Oh, he's, yeah. uh, he's done another set. This was only, I'm not sure when it was written. I guess it's harder to find if it was written on a play that's old, but this translation only hit the shelves last year. Right, um, okay. Here in Canada, it's it's only just sort of coming out in hard book. I got this copy from the from the UK, and uh, yeah. I will I will get the next one. It is it's super easy read, and it is like perfect for a rainy day. Yeah, so it gets muddled in its characters. It's almost like he transcribes sound and stage directions too much. Yeah. Quite often, someone will leave the calf, and the conversation carries on, and I'm muddled. I thought the person having the conversation just left. Like yeah. I'm saying, you get the sense it is a dead cafe, that it is just empty, yet there's often three staff right, and a, a random customers who you're not sure. It's just, it's just muddled. It, it, it's like it would make sense on the stage because you can visually track. But here, yeah. uh, especially like you're learning a lot of names, you know, there's Kazoo uh, or Katsu, uh, Fumiko. There's, you know, when you're, when you're, reading a book based on foreign names you're taking in these these almost brand new words if, if you're yeah, not familiar yeah, yeah, completely. so it it does almost get a bit frustrating at times despite being an easy read like the amount of times i had to flip back a page to say who, who was having that conversation <laughs> it's, it's sort of easy to redefine but it's like ah, it just it's it's just more complicated than it has to be it feels yeah 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 I'm with um, you. And so I was reading some reviews on the Goodreads just to get a, a general consensus. And, and, you know, I think like me, a lot of people just found it kind of heartwarming. Yeah. But some people found it too whimsical, which I, I can imagine, you know, happening. You get yeah. 50 pages to introduce a new character, keep going with the staff and wrap that up. Yeah. And there was one who found it a little offensive. And after the explanation, I can see why all our, our protagonists outside of the staff are, are female. Yeah. And when you look at it in terms of how they're defined, it, it, it doesn't feel so progressive. With, within the lovers, for example, her, her partner is basically uh, a computer programming gaming geek who is super shy and un un uncomfortable with himself. Awkward, yeah. And she is a beautiful, successful woman who speaks multiple languages. And she's questioning, like, oh, am I just jealous because his career's overtaken mine? And it's it's stuff like that. Like each each of the characters does have a sort of undefining feature, I suppose, which sort of backtracks them. Um, so when you put it like that, it's it is like, oh well. I guess was that was that was written by a guy. someone? Was that person Western or? or? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. So that's in the stuff where, like, well, I don't know too much about Japanese culture. Like that whole thing about the the younger daughter had sort of inherited the inn when it should have been the older daughter, and the only way she can get out of it is is to bring her um, older sister in. I'm not. I don't know. I don't really. I guess that would happen. Like Westernized you know, well, culture. I've, I've watched a fair few films from Kim Kim Kai Duke, and mm. he, he he lends leans into that world quite heavily at times sort of um expectations and traditions up, upholding yeah. traditions traditions yeah expectations mm. and traditions mm. so they, um, definitely, they definitely exist out there quite heavily still there is there's a whole aspect that is added there is a woman sitting in the one seat that you have to sit on okay. and at first the the first person is just a bit impatient and it's just like hey excuse me can i can I sit here? Can I just get you to move? And she sort of gets overly aggressive. She can be a bit annoying. This this character that who's who's like, like I say, they go over the rules again and again to begin with. And, Is there a um, reason for that? The rules. Yeah. Well, this is where we find out that there can be a penalty. The woman sitting in the chair all the time. When you when you if you physically try and grab her or move her, she'll give you a look. And your body will get so heavy, you just feel the weight of everything, and you just crumple to the ground, and you're kind of paralysed. Very slowly, the the people who work there are just super nonchalant and chilled. They're like, "Let's get another coffee." So they go up to the woman in the chair and go, "Hey, can I get you a refill?" She says, "Yes, please." And as they fill up her coffee, 
the person on the floor is like, what the hell? They're, they're released. This woman is a ghost. Right. She is there all day, every day. And she was someone who did not drink the coffee before it gets cold. And she is stuck. The only time we can get into that seat is when she goes to the toilet. Okay. So there's an extra sort of rule added. And there's this sort of comical, uh, you know, they come back and they've been through an emotional moment. And then this ghost comes up to them and goes, move now. <laughs> and they have to sort of eject the seat. So there, are, there, there is a stake to the rules. Okay. There can be some beautiful descriptions. I think uh, here's one that I tagged because it was so nice. It's like, she was a woman who gave her impression that her fortune had passed her by. And that kind of sums up a lot about what this book is. It's like yeah. regret. Yeah. And knowing you can't change anything, it's no. all about the inner turmoil emotion. It's all about the the personal release. My my overall review, this is this is pretty weepy and soppy. It is it is chicken soup for the soul, but it yeah. does hit the spot. Um, no. Idea. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna wrap it there before I give any more in, yeah. in case I spoil it, this feels pretty spoiler free. Like you could probably read a blurb and and get the gist of these these time travellers. Um, I like the structure of it. I, I'm, you know, I've got like an uh, uh, an affiliation with the stage. I like I've done performing arts and things like that. I know yeah. how to, I've been part of stage plays and blocking and all that sort of thing. And what's involved and having splitting the stage up, so I can definitely see how it translates to stage really well be interesting to read a book that's gone from stage to book right yeah fleshing out that detail and stuff but he said yeah I, I, well, clearly from the off i was uh, indeed to it and it said this sounds wicked mm. like, sort, sort of level i would read do you reckon the, the the stage show was all four stories on the same night or they were different stories every night and that's why the setup is in there every single chapter. Almost. Oh, I see. No, I think it would have been in one play, right? I would have thought so, just because neither <laughs> seems enough for one. And like you said, like it's a perfect four act play. Like you can have two, have an interval, and round off. And and the second one is like not necessarily the emotional biggest, but the um, it feels climactic. Yeah, it is the the mother traveling to see her daughter, and it's it's the most rule breaking, kind of twisty, uh, like take everything we know from the last three stories, and and use that to to create like a oh we've pulled the wool over your eyes a little bit here. I I think one of my questions I asked you was, what what are books where the concept was better than the book turned out to be? Because I think I messaged you that about halfway through the first or second story when I was getting a little fed up with trying to keep track of everyone. Yeah. And it was still explaining the rules, even though it's like 25 to 75 pages. I was like a little influxing whether the concept was, it's, it wasn't quite turning out to be as good as the promise, but the concept was still great. So I think I text you what, what book's concept is better than it has. I, I have a prime example for me, which is Bird Box which mm -hmm. became a huge Netflix movie. My, my friend was working on it and she gave me the book because she knew I was a reader and the, the, the plot just kind of falls short. Like the premise was great and it just felt like didn't quite know where to go with it. And, the, and I think the, the film tracks pretty closely with the book. I don't remember any major, you know, aside from a few snippets, it, it follows out the same. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. Of it. Is that is um, con? Oh, Station Zoo. Station Zoo. Do I know that one? Zoo Station. The st one that we all read together. Oh, Station Eleven. Yes, Station Eleven. Yes, the Apocalypse One, or the Apocalypse One, anyway. I believe that is Station Eleven by Saint Clair. Someone Saint. With a saint in their name, uh, Helen Saint Clair. Uh, I remember looking at that and thinking it was going to be really, really interesting. And then reading it and just not being as blown away by what I'd read 
as I'd hoped I would have been, I guess. But that's not to say that's the answer to your that answers your question, though, really, does it? Um, concept. Yeah. So the concept of that is post-apocalyptic world. Mm -hmm. Some a group of actors have somehow got together, and they are doing a travelling Shakespeare show. I expected it to have more of a travelling Shakespeare show. No. <laughs> No, it just, it was, it wasn't really a story for me. It was just a group of people in an instant of an apocalyptic world and what happened to them on that. It's split into three, if I remember, paralleling stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, the past is very about an actress or a pop star and, and sort of, spotted coming out of a cafe and very social media orientated which i was not yes, expecting right. and i it, did it, not it enjoy start, um, that's when, the, when they, the, the, the thing starts spreading isn't it right the early rumors yeah. and stuff and then there's a story of i guess a massive pe group of people like in the hundreds who are just trapped in an airport yeah. during the 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 main event and they sort of make life for themselves at the airport yeah and then there's the sort of 10 years later when everyone's sort of come to terms of it and there's the traveling circus yeah no that's a good example I, I guess the blurb really sold one part of the story which felt like it the smallest part of it yeah i don't think i'd clocked that they were different time periods maybe the first one where the where the where the it spread hmm because the people in the, there was a relationship wasn't there that like he was the father of the daughter of one yeah, the, see, I, I do think there probably was a payoff I didn't pick up on. Mm. Like, that past relationship brings us to the, the furthest point of the Shakespeare team, and it's like, ah, oh, yeah. he was the father, and that's sort of a nice twist. Yeah. I, there, I believe there's something along those lines, but I also remember going, oh, okay, but not. Yeah. it's yeah. not like there was a huge mystery who her father was. And no, Sometimes no, when there's no. huge events, like a post-apocalypse, and half the world has died, it's like... Well, I'm glad you found out who her father was, but I think yeah. um, <laughs> closure now, everyone, like millions of people are doing it. <laughs> you. Mm. No, exactly that. Yeah, so that, that would be an example of that, I, read, I would say. Mm. I definitely want to read the book that you've just, you've just sold, you've sold it very well. Well, okay, well, yeah, I'm glad we did this a spoiler-free one. I, I've, been, I've been editing all our past ones, and I think Day of the Triffids and Cold Storage, I said I wasn't going to be too spoiler-heavy. And I really just go beat to deep, beat to beat. <laughs> going to wrap it up around here i want to thank you for listening and i hope to see you again next episode until then support your local bookstores and have a great day